On the night that Bunny Folger died, a mysterious person stepped off the elevator on the 12th floor wearing boots. Shortly after we heard sounds of Bunny struggling, a mysterious person walked the secret passages of what we assume is the 14th floor and appeared to be wearing booties over their shoes. They also sneezed. Do they have allergies? Or was one of Howard's cats in the passage and the masked person is allergic to cats? Are we talking about two different suspects? Could one suspect be on two different floors so quickly? Admittedly, the 12th floor is directly below the 14th. This sends the investigation in a whole new direction. Let's solve Only Murders in the Building, Season 2, Episode 4. Here's looking at you. The kid in this case is Lucy. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Bunny Folger, who framed Mabel, Charles, and Oliver for Bunny's murder, why and how did Bunny end up in Mabel's apartment? Who is moving the Rose Cooper painting? What became of Rose Cooper? Spoilers for the first season and the second season, first four episodes of Only Murders in the Building. If you haven't seen all 14 episodes, pause this video, watch all the episodes of season four, and then come back. Or Teddy is going to do to you what he does before he says the word, Namaste. Good news, Arconiacs. Only Murders has been renewed for Season 3. Of course, that does mean somebody else is going to die in the Arconia. Plus, the program got nominated for Outstanding Comedy at this year's Emmy Awards. Steve Martin and Martin Short were both nominated for Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. But that's not all. Guest Actor in a Comedy Series also got a nomination for Teddy Demas himself, Nathan Lane. Guest actress in a comedy series saw a nomination for Jane Lynch. Woo, everybody, well, not everybody got nominated. Selena Gomez didn't get nominated. Here are the other nominated actresses in the lead actress comedy field. What do you think, guys? Should Selena Gomez have been nominated? Write to us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters. You'll also, on YouTube, we want those likes and comments. Hey, let's get right to it. The Double Seed Credit Clues. Our opening credit clue was an Easter egg of flip-flops in a tree. Based on Charles's hit song, Angel and Flip-Flops. Our closing credits showed the bloody knife as well as the cover of Charles's hit single. Once again, if you're listening to this podcast on a podcast app like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we need you to subscribe and leave a written review. That's the only way to get our name out there. And if you're on YouTube, please F that like button like your Teddy Demas. YouTube demands channels have subscribers, likes, and comments. If you can be an angel in flip-flops and do all three, we will definitely make an omelet. Before we run down all the suspects, let's see what episode four taught us about our victim, Arconia board president, Bunny Folger. If Bunny knew about the secret elevator, I feel like we have to assume that Bunny also knew about the secret passageways. Now let me say as a complete aside, with the secret passageway leading to vents in people's apartments, Bunny could have had air conditioning installed in the building and the tenants wouldn't have to have so many window units. Bunny appears to have been stabbed with a knife from Oliver's kitchen. While in the end, Bunny didn't want to step down as Arconia board president, she was excited about Nina's baby. Now, Bunny's last words, 14, 14, savage, savage. Do you think Lucy, Charles Hayden Savage's ex's daughter, is 14? I think Lucy looks older than 14. The actress who plays her is rumored to be 20. Of course, there's also a theory that Bunny was saying something other than 14, but Mabel heard it as 14. A bit like when in this episode, Charles tries to get his phone to recognize what he's saying, but it can't. What do you guys think? Can you think of a word or words that could be confused as 14 or savage? Of course, there's the secret elevator with 11 floors listed, and people, they just can't get their heads wrapped around this. Alexis wrote, I looked at the blueprint of the Arconia, and if you count the floors, it helps to explain why the elevator goes to 11. There are 12 floors visible above the ground, but Charles lives on the 14th floor, and then there's a penthouse. I'd assume there are three floors beneath ground level? On Twitter, Amber, who's at Lilacs for Amber, wrote, What is the significance of 14? Who lives on the 14th floor? Hey, 
Okay, this is just getting very confusing. And if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, trust me, on YouTube, we're going to show that if you look at the exterior of the Arconia, there are 13 visible floors. And we assume there's a penthouse that can't be seen from the street. So all these floors are visible from ground level. Now, if it wasn't already abundantly clear, the theme of this season is parenting and parents. We focus on Bunny's mother, Charles's father, Charles's relationship with Lucy, his would-be daughter, Oliver and his son, Nina and her baby, Teddy and Theo. What is the parental bond between the killer and victim Bunny Folger? Is there one? As we dive into the suspects, Neto wrote, I need the murderer to be a character from season one for this to have a satisfying ending. Don't repeat season one, it was perfect. This season, it wouldn't make sense. I'd assume that Netta's talking about how Mabel's new relationship, Alice, could be read a bit like Charles's season one relationship with Jan, the eventual murderer. Howard Morris from Apartment 3C. Gabriel wrote, I still think Howard and Jan were in cahoots. Not necessarily helping, but I think she confided in him a lot, meaning he knew more about last season's murder than he lets on. Okay, let's get to that. Let's look at Howard's handwriting that we broke down last week. In Season 1, Episode 10, Charles implies that he figures out that one of the notes found in Tim's trash was written by Jan because this J matches a note that she wrote a J on and she left for Charles. And those J's are ridiculously similar. But look at the other letters. The I in Jan's note, the one we know Jan wrote, doesn't match the I in the note found in the garbage that Tim Kono had from Season 1. No, it matches the I that Howard wrote when he was taking minutes of the Arconia board. So does the L. So do almost all the letters match letters from the note. Let's follow this note again. We know that on the day he died, Tim Kono went to Jan's apartment. She gave him a bag of trash. He threw that bag of trash away. Later, Mabel found that bag of trash, which she believed was the same bag Tim Kono was carrying, and found this note in it. It seems obvious Howard wrote this note. That doesn't make him a killer, but how did something that Howard wrote end up in trash that Jan had and then handed to Tim Kono? There's one other bit that we need to pay attention to. It was odd last season when everyone assumed the Demises killed Tim Kono. Jan kept getting the focus off the Demises, even though she was the killer, and pointing the finger at Howard. But what about the cat? The who? Well, I'm just going over your notes here. and Why aren't we looking more at this man... Howard Morris, don't you think it feels a little too easy? I, mean, I take another look at Howard. Hmm. This week, Howard has a new story about how he got a black eye. He claims Nina punched him, pointing the finger at a different suspect. He doesn't say why Nina punched him. He does say, and Howard always makes me laugh, that Nina would cut a bitch. You know what? Hold on. Podcast timeout. I find Howard hilarious. Don't let him be the killer because he needs to be on every episode. He's funny. He's funny. I'm sorry. I find him more funny than the three leads, more consistently funny than the three leads. I love Howard. We also heard some yodeling at the beginning of the episode. We can assume that's Howard in his group. Possibly the only thing keeping Howard from prison in the minds of many of our listeners is that he doesn't have the parental theme that this season seems to be tied to it. What do you guys think? New board president, Nina Lynn. Vicky wrote, Nina's feet are not injured, they're swollen, which pretty much always happens in the last trimester. And it's pretty painful. And if she's rubbing her foot, probably wasn't putting on boots. Jenny B also wrote, I had swollen feet during my pregnancy, so much that I had a hard time fitting into flip-flops. Hello. Those boots don't look roomy. I'd say that some people in the comments were suspecting Nina of faking her pregnancy, but she didn't fake it. Now, Nina lives in apartment E. I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's on the 14th floor, because when the gang went into the secret passage, they didn't go down a floor before finding her apartment. So if Nina lives in apartment 14E, she lives directly above Mabel, who lives in 12E. At this point, unless the show directly tells us that Nina lives in 14E, we're going to have to keep it as an assumption, because these rooms do get a bit tricky. Nina's baby daddy is a dude named Jared. Nina has big plans to transform the Arconia, plans that Bunny never would have approved of. And so when Bunny backed out of leaving board president, how bad did that hurt Nina and Jared's plans? 
Now, the episode implies that Nina would never have killed Bunny. But of course, it doesn't actually provide Nina with an alibi that says she isn't the killer. Now, I love referring to Dame Agatha Christie because she was infamous for clearing suspects of suspicion at the beginning of a book, only for readers to turn their focus elsewhere and not realize all the clues did point to the original suspect. What do you guys think? I've never thought Nina was the killer, but I'm not so sure we should write her off as quickly as our podcast hosts do. Teddy and Theodemus. A lot of people want to look at Teddy's shoe that he stuck out in the elevator. Doesn't really look like a boot to me, but what do you guys think? Theo is at least the right size, you might think, for this person in the secret passage. Oliver's son, Will. He doesn't really seem tied to this action in any way. But in a father-son relationship, he is having trouble wrangling these kids. More Skittles! Alice Banks has had a couple episodes off, but let's not lose focus on her and how she could be tied to this painting mystery. Lucy. Would the show have a teenager, one who is acting like Charles' daughter, be a killer? Probably not, but there are a lot of clues, and let's look at Lucy as a suspect. She's known about the secret passageways for at least eight years when she played in these secret passageways eight years prior with neighbor Arnov's daughter. Lucy claims she's been having troubles with her mother, but before she came to the Arconia, she did confirm that the key to Charles' apartment worked. She is in the building on the night that Bunny died. What is she wearing on the night Bunny died? A bridesmaid dress, and admittedly a bridesmaid dress with sneakers. But earlier in the episode, Lucy sent a photo to Charles, which showed her in that dress wearing boots. Boots like the person who got off the elevator in last week's episode. Once again, let's look at the night of Bunny's murder. If we understand the layout, and it's tricky, Lucy appears to be on the 12th floor, sees Charles and Mabel get off the elevator, then rides the elevator up to 14 to sneak into Charles' apartment. Note she has a large bag, bag easily she could fit boots into, and a disguise into. Is she running away, or does she have ulterior motives? Okay, you're running away from your mom, you're going to Charles' place, but why sneak into the secret passageway? Why not just crash in one of Charles' bedrooms, or watch TV on the couch, or play a game on your phone? Lucy seems to have gone to the Arconia with the specific motive of going into the secret passageway. She didn't even say hello to Charles when she saw him outside the elevator. One other thing about Lucy. Since season one, viewers have thought Lucy's note to Charles had handwriting that was very similar to other notes from season one. Lucy ends the episode by saying, how you come back and why depends on how weird things get. We don't really know how weird things have gotten for Lucy, but she gives this warning to Charles. You need to find them before they find you. Who is the them and they she is speaking of? What do you guys think? Is Lucy actually a suspect? Let's look at the big three. Oliver Putnam in apartment 10D. It appears that a knife that Oliver owns killed Bunny. Who do we know who was in Oliver's apartment who could have grabbed that knife? Well, we know Jan was. We know that Charles and Mabel were. We know that the superfans were. We know Will was. Does anybody else have access to Oliver's apartment? Or do they have to use a key and or the secret passageways? Charles Hayden Savage. Charles is real quick to try to reach and grab the bloody knife, put his fingerprints on it while other people are watching. That could be ignorance, or it could be a shrewd move. Bloody Mabel has an online stalker, theoretically, who is writing up all sorts of details about Mabel's life. Is that Alice? Who else could it be? Is Oscar back? And look at this outline of the mysterious person in the secret passage. Do you see Oscar? Who do you see, guys? Back with a short two-minute segment on the wonderful music in Only Murders is our musical expert, Double M, Matt Murdock, who's at Musical Concepts on Twitter. What do you got this week, Matt? Hey, time for the Quadruple M, the Matt Murdock Musical Minute. And today I want to talk about the effectiveness of pedal points, which was used towards the end of the fourth episode, right after Lucy tells Charles to get tougher, and he puts her in the car. What the pedal point does is it stays in one spot. It doesn't change with the harmony. It's like a fixed point that the harmony moves over, even though that fixed point doesn't change. And it creates tension, which builds up to him looking at the phone. And then a rising bass line is used in order to further amp up the tension till we get to him talking to Jan. But it's the effectiveness of the pedal point 
because it is fixed, but still things are moving against it, that sets up the tension that allows the rising baseline to build your anticipation. So if the music from that particular part where he's putting Lucy in the car is played with its normal harmony, it would sound like this. But because the bass note never changes, the harmony creates more tension. And it sounds like this. How does that work? Well, we humans expect bass lines to move when the harmony changes. And when it doesn't, that psychologically creates tension. And that's all I've got for you this time around. Back to Bubba. The best part of every podcast is your feedback. And we have so much. I'm trying to get everybody's feedback. I'm trying to touch on everybody's feedback. If I don't mention yours, I just filed it and I'm going to mention it on a future podcast. On Facebook, Susan wrote, I love your Let's Solve Only Murders in the Building podcast. Would you consider a podcast for Yellow Jackets? The fan page on Facebook is blown up with whacked out theories. Well, let me say, Yellow Jackets also just got an Emmy nomination, not for comedy, but for drama. And the Double P HQ family, we have one of our hosts, Catfish, who absolutely loved Yellow Jackets. Another one of our hosts, Double M Matt Murdock, is getting into it and loves it as well. But September 2022, we're going to be having three shows where we need to do after show podcasts for every week. That's House of the Dragon and or Lord of the Rings. Lord help us if 1899 or Babylon Berlin Season 5 drop an episode in September. We're doomed. Also on Facebook, Peter Connolly wrote, Here's my crackpot theory. Alice killed Bunny. I think she's perhaps Rose's granddaughter and is desperate to get the real painting back. I think Rose painted without Charles's dad's knowledge. And when he saw the painting, he went berserk because it knew it would destroy his marriage and he'd lose his son. That's why I think he was arrested. Rose might have been pregnant with his child when she disappeared to hide from him. Mm, Now, Peter, that's your thoughts. I think Rose was hiding from somebody else. Peter goes on to write, Of course, there are a lot of red herrings in this show, but I still don't have all the answers. It's a great show. Looking forward to the next episode. On YouTube and Twitter, we had a poll out saying, What do you want the ship name to be for Mabel Alice? Carlita wrote back and said, I think the ship name should be Mabliss pronounced May Bliss. Aha. Uh-huh. What do you guys think? I think Malice won the polls both on Twitter and YouTube. What do you guys think? EGLF wrote, so happy to find a YouTube channel that makes theories about this show. Hello from France. Well, hello, bonjour. And I was just in France at the beginning of June. Good to hear from you. Tamara wrote, I've turned all my only murders in the building friends onto this podcast. You guys are amazing. My observation of the killer, he or she has very small feet. Can't wait till next week. Jackie wrote, I think the person with the boots off the elevator is not related to the murder, at least not directly. I think it was Alice, the fraud artist. She painted a replica of Rose's painting, hoping to switch it out for the original. And Howard, not the killer, was the accomplice. I think Rose, Howard, Alice were plotting to switch the painting out so Rose can have the original. Jackie, those are smart thoughts. A thought I've had recently is, is it possible Bunny sold the painting and that's why she has so much money that she can move to Boca and she can give big money to Ivan the waiter. Sonia feels very similar. She wrote, I think the person that went into Bunny's apartment just attacked her for the painting but didn't kill her. Then Bunny went to Mabel's apartment for help and someone was there who actually meant to kill Mabel. Ooh, Sonia, ooh. Amanda Woods, who has great theories, is going down the, it's not Jared, but Tim Kono, who's the father of Nina's baby. Both Nina and Tim have careers in finance, and Tim Kono did get an engagement ring. I'm your happy drug, wrote, why was Bunny giving Ivan so much money? Was she trying to get rid of cash made from selling the authentic Rose Cooper painting? That's what I'm saying, I'm your happy drug. She's ready to retire. How am I going to afford Boca? Well, I'll sell this million dollar painting. I'll just live with the replica. Ooh. I could see that. I'm your happy drug. Fusion Love Stories wrote, I still think Howard framed Charles with the painting, but now think Charles's stunt double from season one may be the color. Bunny said Savage. Could that be a clue? And finally, Sarouche wrote, I'm rooting for one of the original three to be double-faced, psychopath, unhinged maniac who did all of this quite loudly in broad daylight, especially Oliver. Martin Short would betray a chilling, phenomenal psycho killer. Even though it may be too dark for the show's tone, I want to see it. Well, Sarouche, 
That is crazy. I think that's a great idea. I doubt the show would do it, but wouldn't that be a shocking punch in the gut for all the viewers? What do you guys think? Last season, I was very suspicious of Mabel. To be honest, to this day, I still think Mabel makes more sense as a killer than Jan did. But what do you guys think? Do you want one of the big three to have killed anybody and be truly evil? Write to us and let us know at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ, YouTube. Hit the like button, every like button. Leave a comment, even if the comment is, I'm leaving a comment. We need them. Thank you guys so much. Next week, we're at the halfway point.